Hey there, everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a complete content marketing strategy for your brand or your business so that you can grow and get new customers and create a funnel that will bring people from being strangers to being repeat customers. So this is going to be a very good video. If you ever wondered what should you be creating, what kind of content should you be putting out there? Where should you be putting out content? This is going to be a very helpful video for you. Hey there, my name is Brandon Bershears. I create daily digital marketing videos. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, be sure to comment down below. Let me know if you have anything that you need help with. I'm happy to make videos or respond to comments for those. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Let's talk about building a content marketing strategy. So I think that most businesses understand that they really need to make content now. It's pretty much been, you know, beaten into their heads for the past like 10 years as far as content on the internet is extremely important. The beauty of content marketing is that you're able to attract and engage the right kinds of customers. But in order to do that, you need to have a strategy so that you're able to attract the right kinds of customers. If you just make something for everybody, typically it's going to go on deaf ears and not get any traction. So today we're going to be talking specifically about how to create a strategy, what kind of content you should be creating, how often you should be creating content, and get really deep into exactly what you should be doing. So let's jump into this. So the first thing that I think that you need to be crystal clear on is who is your product or service for? Really identify, I would say, three or four client avatars that you're going to want to be focusing on. And this is going to be very, very important that you get as in-depth as possible. So I've actually created a guide. This is it. This is what it looks like. It is a digital marketing planner. And inside of it, there's client avatar worksheets. I've also gone in-depth and created on how to create a client avatar. If you click that card up in the corner, you can check that out. But creating a client avatar is the first step every single time in your content marketing strategy or any ads that you're going to be running or landing pages that you create, you need to understand who it's for. If you are a company that sells steaks and you just start doing marketing out there, there's people that are vegetarians and vegans and they're not going to want your product or service. So it's important that you don't make content for those people, right? You're going to be wanting to focus on people who want to buy steaks. That's what you need to figure out. Who are the exact people that you want to reach? What is it that they are going through right now? What are their pain points? What are their issues? What are both their psychographics and their demographics? So the actual facts about these people that you need to be reaching. So their age, marital status, education, you know, all of the facts about them, as well as, you know, what are they feeling? What are they worried about? What are their goals? What are their hopes? What are their aspirations? And all these other things. Once you're extremely clear on that, you're able to use these things, their, their hopes and their fears and their pain points and you're able to really find the right kinds of people and construct marketing messages that are going to speak to these people. The more detailed that you can get, as long as there's enough people to be in that audience, you're going to be able to create content and marketing that's far more effective. So I'll give you an example here. I was talking to a friend today um, and he has a marketing agency and he's trying to generate more leads for his agency. And so he said, you know, hey, I'm trying to figure out what it is that, that I'm doing with, with my leads and things. The ads that I'm running are specifically around, you know, generate more leads for your business. But why do people want more leads? What are they going through? What are they worried about? Are they worried about keeping their employees busy? Are they worried about quality of leads? Are they worried about working with people that they dislike? Those kind of angles and the content that you can create around that are far more effective because you're going to be speaking to a specific group of people that are facing a specific problem. And if you can make a promise that they're facing is going to fix the, the problem and take them from before to an after that is really good, you're going to catch their attention. And assuming that you can deliver on that promise that you make, you're going to have happy customers who will become raving fans for you. So, you know, to go through that example really quick, if you had an agency and you're trying to generate leads, you could say, you know, are you a small business that wants more customers, right? That's super bland, super basic and not specific. But if you get very, very specific, like I've done with my my podcast and my agency and things where I target veterinary practices, if I say, would you like to generate six to eight dream clients per week for your veterinary practice? Those are very different. And if I talk about, you know, it's how do you duplicate your most ideal clients so that when you're in practice, you don't have to deal with those clients who get angry and yell at your staff because they don't have the money to pay 
for the services and they don't take good care of their pets. And you can get really detailed. It's so much more effective than if somebody just saw, you know, somebody who's a practice owner. If you're a veterinary practice owner, for example, and you saw the ad that said, hey, generate more clients for your business versus generate six to eight new dream clients per week for your veterinary practice, it's so much more specific and it's going to speak to them. So the internet is very fragmented and segmented because there's just so much volume of content. You need to stand out. The way to do that, I think, is the easiest way to do that is to get very specific to who you're targeting and the messaging that you're going to create and the language that you're going to use to attract these people. I think actually long tail, which is being very specific about who you're targeting, is the easiest way to stand out. I think other ways to stand out are to be really entertaining, to be really educational, really valuable as well. But those things are probably a lot more difficult for most people, especially if you don't have a huge budget to create content. You know, to, it's hard to hire the Harmon brothers, who are famous marketers who create viral video ads for like purple mattresses and um, poopery and you know other products out there. Those people, they're able to stand out because they're remarkable. And if you don't have the skills to create like viral videos, the way to be specific and being specific helps you to cut through the noise because you're talking to individual groups of people. So this does take a lot more work because you're hoping that when you put out content or you put out offers, you're going to put out something very general and tons of people are going to flock to it. But unfortunately, that just doesn't happen. And the reason for that is there's just so much content out there on the internet that it's difficult for people to process. So it really needs to speak to them. If you think about it, when you say pay attention to this or you want somebody to pay attention to you, there's a cost associated with that. You can only focus on one thing and there's so many things to focus on. So in order for somebody to pay attention, they have to not focus on other things. And as a result, it needs to be something that's going to be very beneficial and specific to that person. So get specific and don't hesitate to really cut away and say this is not for you. If, if this is you, it's not for you you're not going to be interested in this. That takes courage because, you know, creating messaging that's for a specific group of people, typically we're taught that it's good to be inclusive for everybody. I'm not saying that you should be, you know, racist or demeaning, but you should say things like, hey, this is for this group of people. If you want this, if you're like this, this is for you. If you're not like this, this isn't for you. So an example of that would be like Apple products, for example. Apple products are for people who like design, they like you know certain features, and it's not for people who like bargain deals. It's not for people who want lower price products. And so they're they're saying, hey, this is a premium product, this is only for a certain group of people. And with that, you get status and all kinds of things. But they did really define that the mar market and the product is not for everybody, and that's okay. So who are the core people that you can attract to your product or service and focus on that. So the next piece in creating a content marketing strategy is we need to know who it is for, the content that we're creating, who is this for? Once we have that, we need to understand what the before looks like and what the after looks like. So if somebody is in need of your product or service, what do they look like before? And then what are they look like after, what are they looking like after they use your product or service? And what do they feel? How do they, what benefits did they find and really how did they grow from that before to the after state if you can define that clearly and tell people hey are you this kind of a person are you facing these problems here's what we'll do to help you get to the after state that's basically an offer and that's what you're looking to do so understanding how you're taking that that person that client that customer from the before state to the after state is very very important so make sure you understand what the before and the after looks like as well so the next thing that i think is really important to do is to create content if you're going to be doing any kind of social media marketing you need to show up frequently i want you to think about your friends and your family the people that you love most in your life probably are people who show up regularly they're not people who show up once in a while they're not flaky people, they are there consistently. So content allows you to exhibit that consistency. And I think that consistency is actually one of the most underrated aspects in content creation and showing up online. If you think about people like Seth Godin, for example, he has written in his blog every single day. And it's that daily ritual of creating content and publishing it that allows him to garner so much success, I think. 
So that makes him stand out and it makes him an expert because he's just been ridiculously consistent. He's also extremely insightful, but he's been able to build up and publish insight because he's working on his craft every single day. I know this sounds like a ton of work. I do daily marketing videos here, and I'm doing that as a conscious decision because I want to master the medium of communicating marketing ideas and marketing messages. And so as a result, I really feel like that if I believe in this stuff, I should put my money where my mouth is, and that's why I'm creating content here daily. This is top of funnel content, though. You're going to want to have different kinds of content that you put out. Top of funnel, which is awareness, middle of funnel, which is evaluation, and bottom of funnel content. Now, you wouldn't show up to somebody and say, hey, will you marry me on the first date? You're going to want to make sure that you have, you know, done all the dating and making sure that you're compatible and all these things. That's what content does. It helps you to get to know people at scale so that you can then invite them to take the next step in the relationship. So awareness content helps to build an audience. It's audience building content. This is things that your question are typical questions or comments or educational pieces. It's basically content that you can create that's going to serve some purpose. Now I know that a lot of people they have trouble measuring ROI on marketing. And the, the reason for that typically is because they're creating only top of funnel content. So I work with a lot of veterinary practices. So I'm gonna give you an example from the veterinary industry. A veterinary practice will create a piece of content which is like a picture of a kitten. They'll post it on Facebook or Instagram and they'll get tons of response and likes and things. But then they won't ever do anything to follow up with the audience that they're creating and segmenting. And so as a result, they say, you know what? Facebook ads don't work because I put content out there and nothing happens. You're expecting people to do all the work to get from, you know what, I saw this picture of a cat, oh, let me check out this veterinary practice. Okay, let me go and set up an appointment for something that I don't even need, know that I need. So creating content that is engaging, that gets likes and shares and comments and helps to build an audience, that's very important. But what you do with that audience is the evaluation type content. So that's things that are more educational or helpful or useful. And it's the kind of content like, for example, if you created a guide or a video about how to potty train puppies, right? So now we're getting a little bit more segmented in that we're saying, okay, this is a cute puppy. Dog owners and cat owners will typically engage with the puppy picture. And then from there, we're saying, hey, do you have a puppy? Here's a useful resource for you. If somebody consumes that content, then you're able to understand that, hey, this person has a new puppy. They are requesting information on this. Maybe it would be a good time to show them an offer for the puppy packages that we have, which are prepaid packages for services, right? So that makes sense. We're using the content to engage and move people down the funnel, which is going from awareness to evaluation to then conversion so that we can generate customers. Using a funnel is important because it allows you to basically create customers from strangers at scale. The funnel is what's doing the sales work for you. And so understanding what your funnel is and how it works and how to move people from being strangers down to customers is extremely important. Here's the thing about this though, it's not always a simple path and it's not always going to work out on your first try. But the beauty of digital marketing and the difficulty is that a lot of things don't work, but you get feedback really, really quickly. So you need to be creating content on a regular basis and this helps you to stay in touch with your clients and customers. But what kind of content should you be creating? So at different stages of the funnel, there are different types of content that are appropriate. So you need to make appropriate types of content. Now for bottom of funnel content, these are gonna be offers and you're going to be basically figuring out what it is that your clients and your customers are going to actually want what kind of offers are going to be you know, effective with them and how can you package those up and make those appear so that they're high in value and they actually provide a good amount of value to your clients and customers. So I think that in general, when you're creating content, you need to really think about the end it first and start with the end in mind. So if you are starting from scratch and you don't have anything built out right now, you need to figure out what your offers are. You need to create the offers so that your clients and customers can actually pay you, that you're able to create ROI for your business. The most surefire way for you to go out of business is to not be able to collect money. And this sounds crazy, 
but so many people go out and they just start creating content. And if you're doing it as a hobby, that's totally cool. But if you have a business, you have limited resources, you need to make sure that you're going to be able to generate return on investment for this. So in order to do that, you need to really be able to collect payment. You need to have your offers set up. You need to have a very clear path for your clients and customers to actually become clients and customers. And then once they're clients and customers, you need to build a path for them to buy over and over again, if possible. I know some businesses are like a one-time thing, like for example, a solar company. If you're having people install solar panels on the roof, that's kind of a one-time shot. But you could do additional products and services, refer things out. You know, there's tons of other revenue streams that you could add on there. But starting at the bottom of the funnel with the money is going to help you to develop content that will generate ROI for you. And when I say content, it could be things like webinars, sales presentations, email follow-ups, videos that help you to sell, things like that. Once that's in place, then you go to the middle of the funnel. So evaluation type things. And this is stuff like white papers, case studies, webinars, things that help people to evaluate your brand or your business. And especially if you're in um, B2B sales, this is very, very important. And it's actually not very difficult to do. You know, doing webinars and white papers are great ways to gen generate a evaluation. For consumer-based businesses, where you're doing business to consumer, you have things like discount codes, promotional clubs, um, trial programs, things like that, that help people to take the next step. Typically with middle of funnel content, you like to give a lot of value in advance and also give the, the client or customer a quick win. That's, that's really good because if, let's say for example, you are a marketing agency like myself and I gave a free guide that was, you know, here are three settings for AdWords that are gonna save you a ton of money this month. If they take that guide, they use it, they get a really quick win and they see an instant jump, they're gonna say, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. I get instant credibility. And then if I have something to, to follow up with that's bottom of funnel, I'm able to then take it to the next level and probably close those people. So that's bottom of funnel content and middle of funnel content. Then we have on top of that, we have top of funnel content. So what are the kinds of things that the audience is looking to engage with? What kind of things are entertaining? What kind of things are useful, funny? Just you have to show up and show up regularly. You don't need to create videos every single day, but you do need to be showing up. Again, it's like the, the people that you know who are flaky versus the people who are consistent. Consistency is going to win for you because you're gonna be able to build a better relationship. People will know, hey, this is the person for that. If you're a realtor or a loan officer or something like that, if you're showing up in people's news feeds and constantly in business, whenever somebody thinks about it, oh, no, I need somebody, you're gonna be the go-to person because you're offering value and you're engaging and you're staying in front of your audience. So it's very, very important that you're consistent. Consistency is king with content. So a lot of times people will say, well, if I create content every single day, what do you think is more important, quantity or quality? And I think as much as possible, do both. Make as good as content as you possibly can, but you need to be consistent and it needs to be regularly done. As much as possible, if you can repurpose your content and post it across multiple platforms, I think that that makes a ton of sense too. So don't just you know go out and blindly create tons and tons of content, but be smart about it. I think that if you are reverse engineering your content marketing strategy from bottom of funnel, where we want people to go and where we want them to end up, and then we go to middle of funnel, what's a relevant middle of funnel offer for that bottom of funnel content, and then what's a relevant offer for top of funnel content. I think that that's very, very helpful. When you're creating content and creating a content strategy, I think it's very important that you plan things out. If you just make it up as you go, it's going to be difficult to be consistent, and it's also gonna be difficult to get good results. So in digital marketing, you get so much more success out of planning things out just because you understand where you're going and you create a map to get there. So, you know, creating a content plan and a content marketing strategy plan is really, really helpful. And I actually have an hour long training on this if you want, be sure to check out that video. But in general, create content that's engaging, specific, entertaining, or valuable, and you're going to go a lot further. So that is the strategy from top of funnel to bottom of funnel, but let's talk about where you should be posting. So where are the best places to put content out, and then what kind of content should we be creating? 
So I think that number one in 2019 and beyond, 100% video is the way to do it, if you can. And I think that everybody can because everybody's got smartphones. You don't need expensive camera gear, but you do need to be creating video and you need to get in front of your clients and your customers. And if you have a business with staff, having the staff show up in front of clients and customers is equally as important. Being on video allows people to get to know you without having to do the actual work of getting to know people. If they know, like, and trust you, and they've seen what you look like before they show up to your business, you're gonna be able to close so much quicker and you're gonna have a lot more success. So make sure that people understand who you are, what you're about, what things you're interested in, and you can convey all that through content. So as much as possible, I would say, create video content. It's only gonna get more important. YouTube is replacing TV. The internet is replacing TV 100%. It's already happened. Digital marketing is now surpassing traditional marketing for the first time in history. It is only speeding up and it's only getting more important. By the same token, it's getting more and more competitive. So I feel like we're in a land grab right now. We're gonna wish in five years that we would have done more to get out there and to build bigger audiences and to engage more clients and customers when it was easy because it's only getting more and more difficult. So that being said, where should you be hanging out? I think that everybody should be typically on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and then there's other platforms that are kind of smaller than those. But for the most part, those are the big three. If you have a local brand or local business, YouTube might not be the best place for you, but repurposing your Facebook content and putting it on YouTube, especially if you're doing videos, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So you should be engaging in all of the platforms just a little bit, at least repurposing and reposting your content. And if you're in business to business, you should be doing LinkedIn every single day because that's an amazing platform with tons of potential and it's only getting more popular. But thinking about where your clients and customers are spending time and then what kind of content is working on that platform and then create content that works for that platform. So native marketing, which is creating content specifically for a native platform, not for you know creating content like a blog post and then linking to it on your Facebook, that doesn't necessarily work as well because you're not gonna get as much reach. So my suggestion for you is if you're gonna go out and you're gonna create content, make it for platforms, make it so that it looks good inside of each one of the platforms and try to engage and build audiences on all of these platforms. You should absolutely be sending the traffic to sign up for email lists and building offsite lists and building your own media that you get to own. Because again, if you're on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, you can get shut down at any time. But that's not saying that you will be shut down. It, it's also not saying that you won't have amazing growth and opportunity inside of each one of these platforms. So you should be building native audiences. You should be building email lists and you should be creating content specifically to engage people and to engage audiences on each one of these platforms. I know this is a ton of work, so don't feel like you have to go out and do everything all at once. Number one, what you should be doing, create a plan of who you're targeting, create a before and after grid, figure out what they look like before and after, figure out what you want the end offers to be at the bottom of the funnel, figure out what the middle of the funnel looks like, and then figure out how do we attract the right kinds of people with the content that we're doing. Now, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that you have to create content that's like super original or super entertaining, or just, you know, it's like such a big mountain to move that you're not sure what to do or what to create. And so how do you get around that? I think as a practical standpoint, content can be things that you have like frequently asked questions. What are some things that people ask all the time? That's what I use a lot of this content for on this channel, right? I have clients and customers that are asking questions all the time. And so I'll answer it with a video here. And then when people ask the question, I can send them that video. So do you have questions in your business that are annoying to answer? Not like, geez, I, you know, what are the kind of questions that keep coming up over and over and over again? And those are the perfect kinds of questions because the customers are asking them. It's gonna provide value to your customers that you currently have right now, but also attract the right kind of potential customers as well. So things that are, are like that, onboarding things, things that help you to build greater relationship with their clients and customers. It's also reports and tools and things that are going to benefit the customer so that they can take the next step in your business relationship that you have with them. So it doesn't have to be just, you know, constantly cat pictures or dog pictures or things like that. It can be, you know, questions and 
providing value to your audience. So don't think that you have to go out and run out and do all of this at once. Set up things over time, and every time you build something and put something out that's new, it's like an asset out there that you can then reuse. A video that you create for YouTube, you can put on your Facebook channel, you can take a snippet, put it on Instagram, you can take that and send it out in an email newsletter and make that the focus of your email newsletter. You can embed it on your website and make a blog post. And each one of these channels will help you to get traffic and will help you to attract the right kinds of clients and customers. So everything that you're building is an asset that you can use over time. There's not a short lifespan to it. So be sure to reuse it, repost it, and make it appropriate for each one of these platforms and your audience on each one of these platforms. So I hope that this was helpful. I know that it's a lot of work. I would love to know what you think about content marketing, your strategy for it. If you have any questions or need help with anything, please comment below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you on the next video.